Good afternoon, welcome to EduSet Network. Friend, as you know, we are having discussion on educational policy and budget reallocation. We have organized a series of lectures. Yesterday, we discussed an overview of education policy in India. We tried to see the different aspect and how the educational policy has evolved over the years. Today, we will move further and we will go deeper uh, to know about uh, what uh, the policy has been in regard to higher education. And as you all of uh, aware that uh, there are uh, three levels, uh, primary, secondary and tertiary, the major focus or area of the governance here, budgetary allocation. So, we will try to understand the budgetary allocation in respect of higher education and subsequent uh, lecture we will talk about the primary education and secondary education. The, there are also Vyan like Sarp Siksha Vyan and Madhmik Siksha Vyan. So, there are various uh, steps being taken on the part of the government. So, we will try to understand cover all these in uh, uh, the series of lecture on this uh, budget, uh, educational policy and budgetary allocation. But the exact figure of budget will come uh, after the 28th of this uh, month. So, we are just uh, uh, going to have uh, how this uh, um, uh, have got into the, the last few years and how the changes have occurred uh, in the decade and over the years. So, um, uh, I hope the today lecture will help you to understand the higher education. So, on your behalf, I welcome Dr. Suresh Kumar, uh, he is an eminent scholar on higher education and presently professor of education in National University of uh, Educational Planning and Administration and his area of uh, specialization is public policy and governance. So, I hope his knowledge and experience will certainly help us to understand this topic. So, on your behalf, I welcome you. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Dr. Amrinder Kumar. Uh, as uh, uh, Amrinder ji uh, discussed and pointed out that uh, education policy and uh, uh, this budgetary education are interlinked uh, because if you want to deliver educational needs, uh, uh, there must be some uh, uh, provision of resource to meet those uh, uh, I mean requirements of education. It is in this context that today I would like to reflect on uh, education policy and budgetary education uh, with a special reference to higher education. In this case, uh, two, three points uh, uh, become important. First is that how over the years education policy uh, has been shaped, uh, especially related to higher education and what has been the trend of budget, budget, budget free allocation in higher education. Uh, in this case, it is um, also important to know uh, that what are the policies, major policies related to higher education. Uh, in fact, uh, if we uh, talk about education policy, uh, we have two major uh, educational policies. One uh, policy, first uh, major national education policy was in 1968 and another policy uh, came in 1986. Uh, but, but beside these two national policies, we have series of uh, policy initiatives. Uh, so, uh, sometimes it is also mentioned that we uh, lack a coherent, coherent and systematic policy in, uh, in education, uh, especially related to higher education. In fact, uh, uh, if you try to map out uh, the terrain of uh, education policy in higher education, you will have to depend apart from these two national documents, uh, other, other important, uh, uh, I mean, uh, government documents, reports, recommendations of different committees, commissions on higher education. And it is on only on the basis of recommendation report of different committees and uh, uh, cir government circulars, uh, government uh, I mean uh, uh, orders, uh, major uh, five-year plans, papers. These are major sources on which we can have some understanding about education policy, especially related to higher education in India. As far as 
uh, education po policy uh, uh, per se is concerned as I mentioned that uh, apart from these two national policies that is national policy on education 1968 and national policy on education in 1986, uh, uh, we had a series of committee and commissions. Uh, the first important commission with uh, regard to university education uh, that was in the very beginning of uh, our independence in the uh, just second year of our independence in 1948-49 uh, I mean uh, uh, under the chairmanship of Radha Krishnan uh, uh, a committee was commission was con uh, uh, constituted uh, that is referred as uh, uh, Radha Krishnan Commission on uh, uh, University Education. This this committee had large number of recommendations and reflection on university education, how to restructure our uh, education system, uh, especially university system. And this was a major point of departure uh, for, for this uh, uh, commission. But besides this, uh, this commission also reflected on the issue of uh, university uh, governance as well as finance. Since today we are reflecting on the issue of budgetary allocation, in this regard it is also important to reflect on this point that uh, Radha Krishnan committee particularly recommended uh, that financial uh, responsibilities should also be shared by or uh, uh, might taken care by the union government. Uh, there was logic behind this. Uh, this commission also recommended uh, that education should be uh, uh, a kind of uh, concurrent uh, responsibility between the union and states. So obviously in this case uh, Radha Krishnan was quite aware, uh, aware about our own educational scenario uh, especially after in independence and therefore uh, in the given conditions or given situations of our uh, uh, resources, available resources with the state and system of distribution of resources between union and uh, uh, states and larger part of resources with the union government, it was quite natural to recommend uh, the, the responsibility of financial uh, uh, needs to be met by the union government and this was one of the major, uh, I mean, uh, recommendation of the Kothar, uh, sorry, Radha Krishnan Commission. But if we just move from Radha Krishnan Commission to Kothari Commission, this Kothari Commission was very, very comprehensive uh, and it took and it reflected on many dimensions of education system and it was not only restricted to university education, it, it uh, also reflected on uh, all sectors of education, national consciousness, national development, national integration, all these concerns were reflected and articulated in the Kothari Commission. But what was more important in this commission recommendation was uh, also related to financial uh, I mean allocation or budgetary allocation for educational needs. And uh, if we traverse through different policy documents, uh, we come across the fact that this had been reiterated in uh, subsequently in all uh, policy documents. Uh, for the first time, uh, Kothari Commission recommended that 6% uh, of the DG, uh, GDP should be allocated to education. And this was, uh, I mean, uh, uh, a very practical, uh, uh, I mean, recommendation given our educational requirements in the country. It is another thing that due to our own constraints of resources, we could not uh, allocate 6% till date. Uh, but, uh, Obviously, this was a major reference point for budget, budgetary allocation uh, and especially in the case of higher education. As uh, we are aware uh, and uh, so far budgetary allocation is concerned that in the first decade, especially after independence, our goal was to consolidate our the gain of Indian independence to build our nation, to build uh, uh, a strong infrastructure and a strong base for uh, our uh, country. And uh, it was also one of the tasks to shape the future of India. And uh, the, uh, I mean, visionary of that uh, point of time, they, they uh, thought that unless we strengthen our university education system or higher education system, scientific knowledge base, it, is, it may not be possible to build a strong India in true sense of the term. Uh, because uh, if you do not have 
a, a strong knowledge base. Uh, if you do not have a strong scientific base, uh, that was the need of the hour and I, 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 in the absence of this, uh, we could not have imagined the way we have moved over the last uh, six decades of our constitutional engineering and more than 60 years of our independence. India is, uh, I mean, uh, one case which is uh, uh, generally being explored by Western uh, scholars also that how India has managed its own diversity, how India has uh, 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 resolved its own uh, problems and uh, succeeded as a democratic country. And it is in this context uh, that the sound foundation of higher and technical education was one of the key instruments of providing a strength and direction to our whole uh, I mean project of nation and state building after independence. And for this reason, uh, I mean uh, the, the Kothari Commission recommendation on the uh, sorry uh, Radha Krishnan Commission recommendation on the one hand and subsequent vision of uh, the leaders uh, of the uh, period of that time uh, which also also got reflected in the Kothari Commission recommendation. So, it was very, very important and subsequently, uh, I mean, uh, it was in this background that university and higher education got uh, uh, due attention during the first uh, uh, decade of our independence and this was uh, quite natural. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, it is also, uh, uh, I mean, uh, um, criticized, it, it is solved sometimes also uh, interrogated that why we paid so much uh, uh, attention on higher education in our initial decades and we, uh, at the cost of primary education. Uh, one can understand the logic of the uh, point. You cannot just go beyond the logic of the time that informs the policy making and policy priorities at a particular point of time. But despite this fact, uh, the 6 point, uh, six percent of GDP alloc budgetary allocation uh, on education uh, is uh, still, uh, I mean, uh, we have to achieve this goal. Uh, we have not been able to uh, achieve this uh, goal till date. Uh, but at the same time, it is also uh, important to uh, note uh, that uh, this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, given the federal structure of our country, uh, the budgetary allocation in higher education is not the sole responsibility of the central government. Uh, as we are aware that uh, uh, this education is a joint responsibility, concurrent resp responsibility, especially after the 42nd constitutional uh, amendment. But even before that, uh, I mean, uh, UGC as a regulating agency uh, created out of UGC Act 1956, uh, this was very, very important uh, where in uh, center had to play important role uh, in university and higher education. Uh, that could not have been just left uh, to the mercy of the states because a state uh, as per the general perception, uh, the state had its own uh, uh, limited capacity and if uh, we had to build the capacity of the state, it was nat uh, quite natural to facilitate or create a space uh, for uh, uh, central involvement in uh, university and um, uh, higher education also. Although uh, given uh, the scenario, a state uh, uh, has been the major player uh, so far uh, university education is concerned because those in institutions created under the state act, I mean especially universities, uh, they, they uh, fall under the uh, jurisdiction of the states and a state had to fund those institutions. This is one uh, context. But beyond that, central government through university grant commissions over the decades and over the years have been playing a role or facilitator, not uh, merely as uh, providing guidelines uh, related to educational uh, I mean, uh, uh, upgradation of universities and uh, institutions of higher learning, but also to, to, to meet certain ex expenditure uh, incurred on university education. And university have been provided by the University Grant Commission a variety of uh, uh, program specific grants and other grants also. Uh, uh, 
this, this could be development in the form of development grants or many other grants. So, obviously, in this uh, case, it is em emerges out of this uh, uh, discussion that a uh, higher education in India has also been a joint responsibility, and therefore. Uh, Central government has also played important role in funding uh, uh, higher education in, 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 in a larger uh, uh, I mean way. Uh, it is of course important to note uh, that uh, I mean uh, there has been also a shift uh, in emphasis so far sectors of education uh, in, uh, is concerned. Uh, one can understand uh, the logic of development uh, as I uh, uh, pointed out earlier that in, in, in uh, initial decade emphasis was on higher education and technical education, scientific base uh, building and all those uh, aspects of our uh, developmental needs. Uh, but in subsequent years, we had also to take care of uh, the aspect of literacy and primary education. And therefore, we find a kind of shift so far allocation of resources and budgetary allocation in education is concerned. Uh, in the especially, uh, I am uh, especially talking about uh, say budgetary allocation uh, coming from the central government or central uh, pool budgetary allocation. Uh, of course, it has also repercussions on a state budgetary allocations uh, in education. So, especially during the 1980s onwards, we find uh, that uh, budgetary allocation on higher education had declined subsequently and uh, uh, that was uh, and major emphasis was paid on primary education and a variety of educational development pro programs com coming from the central government especially after the new education policy in 1986 uh, i mean uh, centrally a sponsored program started to uplift the educational level or literacy level of the uh, uh, the nation and also expanding the base of uh, primary education and obviously that this was one of the priority areas during this uh, during these two decades uh, but as a result of shifting emphasis on a school education uh, uh, higher education gradually i mean uh, 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 also face some kind of problem so far budget free allocation was concerned. And this is one of the important trajectory of uh, I mean uh, budgetary allocation in higher education. Uh, especially in this case, it is also important to uh, uh, dwell on the issue that how uh, education I mean finances are shared between union and states. Uh, as we are aware that a state has its own limited capacity, of course, uh, a state is supposed to meet the expenditure of all those uh, universities which have been created uh, uh, under the act of the respective states and institutions governed and regulated by the state uh, uh, norms. It is also uh, uh, at the same time important that all these institutions have to be given some financial allocation or budgetary allocation. And in most of the cases, uh, I mean many uh, uh, state governments found themselves unable to meet the expenditure uh, themselves. And this was one of the reasons that central government had to come forward and meet the uh, I mean, uh, educational needs as well as resources of the states. So, in this case, uh, uh, as I pointed out that we have a, a fiscal federal uh, arrangement so far resource allocation and resource distribution is concerned. So, uh, as uh, it is important to note in this context that there are three different ways of transferring resources from the union government to states and especially related to education and that to uh, in higher education this is very very important first important institutional mechanism in this case is finance commission and finance commission uh, 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 tr transfer resources from uh, the central pool to states and there uh, there there is uh, inbuilt say or there are wait 
uh, well defined criteria of transferring resources from uh, the union government to state government to through, uh, through finance commission. Uh, but all those transfers through finance commissions uh, basically they become the part of a state budget and a state these are basically non plan transfer to the state and a state has its own autonomy to, 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 to allocate resources accordingly. And therefore, uh, a state in this case, uh, so far educational requirements are concerned, uh, uh, had relative autonomy to allocate uh, budget uh, in their respective states. So far, university education uh, was concerned, or other institution of higher learning or technical uh, education was concerned. So th that remain or that remains with the uh, priority of the state. But uh, this is also important to note at this uh, uh, point that sometimes uh, uh, fiscal transfer through finance commission uh, to the states have also been uh, uh, been constrained by many other uh, consideration due to the priority of the central government to, to, to deliver certain educational needs. So, non plan expenditure uh, and plan uh, expenditure transfer of plan ex uh, expenditure to the non plan expenditure has been in some cases higher. But especially we have seen that during the 11th five year plan, non plan expend, uh, transfer from center to a state has been significant uh, with regard to supporting the state budget. Uh, and this also includes higher education and other sectors of education. So, this is one important uh, I mean mechanism of transferring resources from uh, union to the state. Second important mechanism of transferring res resources is through planning commission. And in this case, it is also important to note uh, that planning commission uh, has its own perspective of plans, how to give direction to education in India, where in there could be a kind of harmony between national priorities and sp uh, 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 state requirements. And depending on the state requirements, uh, uh, I mean planning commissions transfer resources uh, I mean uh, uh, through planning commission to the states. So, this is uh, second important mechanism of transferring resources from the Indian government to states through planning commission. The third important case is the case of transfer of resources through uh, central ministries or departments of the union governments. In this case, uh, as I pointed out that there are a variety of programs and uh, they, uh, for educational development and therefore, it is also important to uh, 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 recall uh, at this point of time that uh, it is also necessary to uh, transfer resources through different uh, ministries and departments to the states to, to achieve certain objectives which uh, may not be achieved in, uh, through a general uh, transfer of resources from the union state. In this regard, two, three important uh, programs uh, could be, uh, I mean, uh, important reference uh, uh, points. One, uh, for example, the Ministry of uh, Minority Affairs. Uh, uh, as we are aware that especially, uh, I mean, Muslims, uh, especially after the Sachar Committee report, uh, it has pointed out that the Muslims are lagging behind the general population so far uh, educational uh, achievement is concerned or uh, educational attainment is concerned. So, obviously, as a national priority, it is also to uplift the educational level of uh, Muslim minorities. And therefore, uh, Ministry of Minority Affairs has its own policies and program to for educational development of minorities and especially the Muslims minorities. Uh, one of such program is uh, uh, I mean especially related to coaching schemes, uh, capacity building programs to, to, to Muslim candidates. So, obviously in this case uh, this, this is transferred through uh, Ministry of Minority Affairs to the respective institutions in the state. So, this, this is third important Sim Similarly, other uh, I mean uh, ministries involved in this case is Ministry of Human Resource Development, uh, uh, I mean Department of Higher Education. Of course, Ministry of Higher Education uh, uh, transfer uh, 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 I mean most of the resources and a, a special component programs through university grant commissions, but there are certain components also uh, 
affairs in Union government and its Ministry of Human Resource Development also plays important role in transferring resources through its own department uh, to the uh, respective states or focused state for specific programs. So, so all these, uh, uh, I mean, uh, mechanism of resource transfer play important role in budgetary allocation. Uh, but uh, uh, if we aggregate the total, uh, I mean, allocation, budgetary allocation on higher education, this is very, very important case. Uh, as I pointed out that in initial decade we put emphasis on higher education and scientific education. So, at that time despite our scarcity of resources or limitation of resources, uh, we allocated uh, I mean relatively higher amount to higher uh, I mean higher education component uh, and uh, uh, but this declined subsequently and especially uh, during the 8th uh, ninth plan period, this this amount or budgetary allocation to higher education uh, is, uh, I mean, uh, that was alarming. That was not up to the mark. Uh, we we cannot sit on judgment of the government because government uh, has decided the budgetary allocation to higher education in its own context because uh, uh, the government has to fix priorities and in this priority allocation has to be matched with the priorities. So obviously in this case higher education slightly I mean uh, 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 went into background uh, as compared to uh, a school education and and other literacy related programs. So, during uh, 8th, 9th uh, and relatively in 10th 5 year plan, uh, the uh, resource allocation in higher education <coughs> has been relatively less as compared to earlier times. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it is also important to uh, remember that uh, this kind of reversal of trend uh, was very, very, uh, I mean, uh, important and contextually specific. But at the same time, we cannot detach the whole, uh, I mean, issue of budgetary allocation in higher education and technical education with the overall socio-economic condition of the country and uh, economic priorities of the country. Uh, as we uh, have witnessed uh, that India has also experienced uh, the uh, constraints of the process of globalization uh, that started during the uh, early decade of 1990s. So, in the 1990s onwards, we have also attempted our suit to integrate, integrate with the world economy. And this, this is quite uh, natural. You cannot detach your, yourself or uh, from the overall global processes. If you have to play important role in the uh, global arena, you have to be part in one way or the other. And this is one important context in which uh, our country also had to undergo uh, through the process of economic reforms in 1990 onwards. And, uh, of course, this was a compulsion and out of this compulsion, uh, the, the various kind of changes took place in our economic uh, uh, scene, uh, a structural uh, adjustment programs came in. So, uh, this also, uh, I mean, uh, heralded or indicated a departure from our uh, uh, model of developments which we had adopted at the time of independence. We, ha we had taken pride uh, uh, our, uh, 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 after due uh, I mean consideration that we will remain as a mixed economy and we will uh, adopt a socialistic pattern of uh, society. So, its socialistic pattern of society uh, will be uh, uh, as such where in both private and public could harmonize uh, the share and they could contribute to the national development. This was I mean one of the consideration at the time of uh, economic uh, thinking at the time of independence and uh, immediately after independence and that was the context that we started with our five year plans. Uh, but in the 1990s, uh, the whole thinking of uh, say mixed economy and socialistic pattern of society due to global pressure had to readjust with the demands of global process and therefore, uh, uh, many kinds of uh, economic reforms program came in. 
uh, one of the important consequence of this uh, economic reform was uh, I mean certain uh, shift in the policy of uh, financing social sectors and education was one of the uh, social sectors which had to face at least temporary challenge of economic pressure and uh, uh, structural uh, uh, adjustment programs in the early 1990s. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it is important to uh, recall that this was uh, the point where in uh, we also adjusted our priorities in education. So, obviously in this case, uh, given uh, the, the, the uh, compulsions of uh, education, we focused more on primary education, a school education rather than focusing on higher education. And this was if we had to adjust our priorities, obviously in this case higher education had to be given less priority than uh, the, the, the uh, school uh, education uh, uh, sector. Obviously, in ideal typical situation, if we are talking about budget, budgetary allocation or balanced budgetary allocation, there should be harmony between all sectors of education, primary education, secondary education and tertiary education. One cannot deny this uh, aspect. But, uh, uh, but, uh, but at the same time, we cannot just, just detach ourselves with the ongoing processes of economic reforms. And this was one of the contexts in which uh, we have also witnessed uh, the, I mean, some kind of resource constraints the, during the decade of 90s and early 2000. Uh, I, because I, uh, this was the time where in uh, higher education had to face enormous problem so far uh, funding was concerned. So, as I pointed out that uh, during the uh, eighth and ninth five year plan, these were more visible. Uh, slight improvement during the tenth five year plan uh, in budgetary allocation in higher ed education <coughs> we seen. But during the 11th plan, we find substantial budgetary allocation to higher education uh, in particular and education in general. Uh, sometimes it is also uh, referred that 11th plan was the plan uh, educational plan because I mean uh, large amount of education I mean edu uh, budget was uh, or finance was allocated to education and this was very very significant. Uh, I mean I am talking about over all budgetary allocation to education, not particularly higher education. But there were so many uh, policy, uh, I mean policy initiative during the 11th five year plan that uh, I mean uh, gave a new fillip or new direction to higher education in many different ways. So, what has happened after 1990 uh, onwards that on the one hand we had also witnessed decline of public expenditure in higher education due to certain compulsions, but still revival in the uh, 11th plan and uh, greater allocation to universities and technical education for uh, I mean a stepping up uh, I mean uh, requirements of higher education. This is very, very significant. Uh, if we um, I mean make uh, say analysis of 11th five year plan that what has been our experiences during the 11th plan period, at least through two, three important points uh, that need to be taken into consideration. Uh, one such uh, important is, uh, I mean uh, important, uh, I mean uh, uh, component of this uh, is that central uh, government came up with uh, its own budgetary allocation and half of the budgetary allocation on education coming from the central government was allocated to higher education. And this was almost uh, 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 after decades this kind of allocation was given to higher education or uh, technical education uh, in, in the 11th five year plan. Overall, if we take the figure I mean, uh, so uh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, huge amount of budgetary allocation was made to education in general and higher education and te technical education in particular. But uh, it is also important to 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 uh, remember uh, our experiences during the 11th plan that uh, during this period. 
central government initiated i mean took many policy initiatives uh, to 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 upgrade our higher education uh, as we mentioned that we started and uh, integrated ourselves with the overall global processes and this this processes also accompanied uh, i mean uh, uh, words like liberalization and privatization in uh, in education so obviously in these uh, uh, i mean in this uh, i mean bunch of processes uh, it was also important to give priority to higher education and obviously keeping uh, in mind uh, uh, our own educational needs uh, higher educational needs the 11th plan uh, uh, period we initiated many uh, uh, i mean uh, steps one of such steps was to setting up central institutions in different states and the number of central universities till 10th uh, uh, plan uh, period that was very very limited but during the 11th plan period uh, i mean uh, we took decision to uh, establish at least 30 central universities in different states uh, as far as uh, i uh, recall 15 central universities have already been uh, i mean established or some state universities have been upgraded to the level of central universities uh, so th this is one of the important uh, initiative taken by the government during the 11th plan period uh, what is the implication of the uh, setting up of central universities obviously uh, in this case i mean different uh, states will have opportunity to 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 send i mean parents will have opportunity to send uh, their children to the central universities for quality education uh, because these institutions are directly funded by the central government uh, and substantial funding to these institution or 100% funding by the central institution uh, is also uh, i mean obvious uh, implication is say building of uh, sound infrastructure uh, uh, instruments for uh, uh, scientific experiment and many other things proper faculty recruitment and all those are uh, i mean inbuilt dimensions of central fund funding to the institution so of course uh, i mean this is just beginning we cannot say that we have achieved uh, the goal of a uh, 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 stepping up higher education in different states by establishing central uh, universities this is not so uh, and this would be over a statement so far our achievement in higher education is concerned uh, but at the same time it is also important to remember that these institution will certainly uh, unfold uh, uh, i mean possibilities for uh, those uh, groups and communities and people uh, of uh, remote areas or uh, who cannot afford education in private institutions or in do quality institutions which are uh, 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 under different control system so obviously central university could be one of the important options for higher education to do, uh, those persons and obviously this this is uh, uh, i mean going beyond uh, geographical concentration because a kind of deconcentration in uh, i mean establishing central university that is evident during the 11th uh, i mean plan period besides this central uh, universities uh, the 11th plan also took initiative to establish uh, more iits indian institute of technology uh, as uh, we uh, are aware that before the uh, start of 11th five year plan we had limited uh, i mean indian institute of technology premier institute of technology in india uh, but Uh, all those institutions have their own limitations in terms of the, their geographical spread or territorial spread uh, but uh, after taking initiative of establishing more iits obviously this consideration have been has been taken into consideration and this consideration of establishing a iit could be considered as a welcome step during the 11th five year plan similarly uh, many institutions uh, uh, like national institute of uh, i mean uh, niita uh, t uh, i triple it uh, say 
institute of uh, say planning and other many uh, central level institutions have been opened up in different in uh, i mean states in different uh, locations and this is very very important step so far uh, stepping up of higher educational needs are concerned the second important component of 11th five year plan uh, was to launch equity program uh, as we are aware that uh, we, we especially after uh, this 1990 economic reforms uh, and uh, subsequent uh, say uh, implications on education se uh, sector this also resulted we cannot undermine uh, the, the the kind of situation that emerged after this economic reforms that led to certain degree of inter regional inter district inter state and inter group disparities in educational uh, uh, attainment and that that is more uh, uh, so in case of higher education so it, it obviously in this case it was also important to uh, uh, i mean uplift the educational status of disadvantage group to include regions who which are otherwise excluded from the mainstream or uh, th those regions those states which are educationally backwards on different parameters so obviously in this case 11th plan uh, period uh, we put emphasis on variety of equity related programs uh, i mean uh, variety of programs uh, and uh, some of the programs i mean need to be taken into consideration one such program uh, was related to uh, say uh, regions uh, as we are uh, aware that we ha have also inter regional disparities and inter state uh, disparities so obviously the ministry of human resource development has its own uh, uh, focus areas for educational delivery uh, those some of the uh, blocks some of the districts of india they have been identified as backward districts or backward blocks so far education is concerned similarly in case of uh, uh, minority backward minorities uh, especially muslims we have uh, i mean muslim concentrated districts which are at the same time not only concentration of muslim but they are all, uh, also backward on ed educational parameters so 11th plan period attempted to harmonize uh, our uh, educational requirements by uh, giving a special focus on those regions so uh, obviously in those regions there was also planned to open up new institution on the one hand and support existing institution in variety of ways ugc especially uh, since uh, ugc is the major player or funding agency so far higher education is concerned so in this case ugc came up with series of equity uh, i mean uh, programs during the 11th uh, five year plan and some of the programs are important to mention here so one such program was catch up grant one time catch up grant given to the institutions of higher learning Uh, especially those institutions which uh, also fall uh, i mean uh, under uh, say uh, under the backward region or backward states so uh, 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 the, the basic uh, mandate or basic objective of catch up grant was to provide some kind of support to this in those institution which could step up their infrastructure they could sub, uh, i mean support their uh, own uh, requirements related to education so this was one of the important initiative taken by the ugc in particular and coming from the policy documents and plan document of the government of india and ministry of human resource development higher education department in general so uh, this was one similarly similarly there uh, there were number of programs uh, uh, those programs were in, initiated during this uh, 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 period uh, such programs are uh, also group specific uh, so uh, one such program uh, of co of course in this case uh, i mean uh, for capacity building of women girls uh, sc st uh, obcs and minorities uh, one such program was uh, to support coaching programs uh, 
uh, I mean, uh, uh, though it was not for the first time that UGC took decision to, to have coaching uh, program for these uh, special groups, uh, it, it was already launched during the uh, I mean earlier plan period and this was an important uh, mandate of the, uh, the, the government to, to provide facility to disadvantaged group. But especially during the 11th five year plan, uh, these uh, programs were strengthened with uh, I mean uh, uh, huge support, financial support for these programs. So three different kind of coaching schemes uh, were strengthened during the 11th plan. One was of course remedial coaching schemes in different universities and colleges for those uh, students which who are weak in education in their they are not able to catch up with the general students so far education I mean uh, their classroom transactions uh, uh, are concerned. So, for those uh, a special group remedial coaching scheme or remedial coaching measures were taken during the 11th plan or in, in other words it was strengthened during this play plan period. The second important I mean component which was strengthened during this plan period was say coaching scheme and expanding this coaching scheme uh, for uh, NET and SLATE examination conducted by the University Grant Commission uh, uh, so far NET is concerned and different states also conduct uh, ed, uh, state level educational test for entry into lecturership. So for uh, I mean to, to, to provide capacity to those students who come from this advantage group, University Grant Commission supported coaching scheme for these people through different institutions, different universities and colleges. The third important component was uh, through <coughs> uh, to, to entry into services. Uh, be it civil services, state services, uh, banking services and variety of services and uh, coaching uh, is provided to the students uh, especially belonging to these groups, these communities which are also considered as disadvantaged groups or communities. So, apart from these coaching schemes, there are variety of equity programs being uh, run by the University uh, Grant Commission and these programs uh, uh, either la launched during the 11th plan period or strengthened during the 11th plan period with sufficient or at least reasonable budgetary allocation. Uh, I mean uh, in this context it is also important to, uh, to remember that uh, University Grant Commission of course uh, on the initiative of the Ministry of uh, Social Justice and Empowerment and Ministry of Minority Affairs launched two important uh, fellowship or scholarship programs for research scholars. So, uh, Rajiv Gandhi uh, fellowship uh, that, that was started during this period and uh, th that was meant for uh, the student of uh, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes uh, to, 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 to do research in uh, higher research in uh, universities and this, this was one of the significant uh, step for meeting the, the, the specific needs of these uh, disadvantaged groups. Similarly, uh, I mean uh, uh, Maulana Ajad fellowship for uh, minority students. Uh, this also uh, is rooted through uh, uh, University Grant Commission and this was also one of the important initiative taken by the government of India and uh, it was uh, the mandate of the Ministry of Minority Affairs and rooted through uh, University Grant Commission that became very, very important inter point of intervention. So far I mean capacity building of minority students are con concerned and especially <coughs> sorry, especially the Muslim uh, candidates are concerned. Apart from these uh, specific programs, there are also programs meant for disabled people or differently able people <coughs> through different components. And especially in this regard, it is also important. Sorry. It is also important to remember in this uh, context that women and girls 
they uh, they also caught the attention of the uh, uh, women their educational needs uh, especially for e women empowerment ugc came up with a scheme of um, i mean empowerment or capacity building of women ma managers in higher education this is one of the in innovative steps taken during the 11th plan period Besides this, I mean a specific focus on girls education uh, and girls education uh, especially construction of women hostels in, in especially in those areas which have uh, uh, minority concentration or concentration of disadvantaged groups. So, th th this is another important intervention by the uh, uh, government during the 11th plan period. And yet another important uh, intervention point uh, is say a start of of uh, new recruitment, faculty recruitment in uh, different universities and colleges and especially in the central universities. Obviously, uh, still we uh, suffer from a gap uh, between de demand and supply of faculty in different universities and institutions of higher learning, but at least process is started during the 11th plan period. In fact, before 11th plan period, there was almost a kind of uh, say mortuary so far uh, uh, I mean recruitment of faculty was concerned. Uh, for long period faculty were not recruited in different universities and colleges, but during the 11th plan period this process of recruitment started and obviously this is important intervention in this regard. Similarly, uh, I mean different faculty support programs are started during uh, the, the, the 11th plan period, but all these policies and initiative by uh, the, the, the uh, by the government of India through uh, uh, I mean university grant commission in particular and through different ministries in general, uh, we have been able to uh, I mean uh, achieve certain level of or upgrade certain level of in enrollment of uh, students in higher education. Uh, but at the same time it is also important to remember that uh, still we have to go a long way so far enrollment in higher educational institutions are concerned. Uh, and uh, it is also important to mention in this regard that it, th this is not just about general population. If we reflect especially on the enrollment of uh, the groups and communities which are considered at disadvantage, this becomes more important. And for uh, stepping up the needs of these groups, it is also important to launch other equity related programs or a strengthened equity related program and 11th plan period was important uh, I mean intervention in this regard. Uh, we are uh, now uh, at the uh, start of 12th five year plan and during the 12th five year plan there are many uh, in, uh, I mean uh, initiatives uh, on anvil, uh, but at the same time it is also important to uh, recall that we also have experienced some kind of shift in policy uh, or out of policy reforms we have also seen some kind of shift in emphasis on public spending in higher education. Uh, this the process of uh, public spending in higher education that uh, was one of the e major issue of debate during the 11th plan uh, period. It has unfolded in a more vigorous way or in a more concerned way during the 12th five year plan. As we are aware that during the 11th plan period that the model of PPP public private partnership that that uh, came into existence and this uh, captured the Im uh, imagination of policy makers in education uh, especially in higher education in India. But at the same time it, it had also certain degree of say limitation and a group of I mean uh, 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 policy makers on the one hand and critic of uh, say education policy in higher education on the other, they have certain reservation so far the model of PPP is concerned, Pro public private private uh, public private partnership in higher education is concerned. But during the 12 5 year plan, I think uh, this private public uh, public private partnership would be one of the important site of uh, say 
uh, delivering uh, educational needs to the people in India, especially higher education. And uh, this is, this is uh, what will be the shape of pu public-private partnership that is uh, still to unfold in true sense of the term. Uh, some innovative measures could be ta taken during the 12-5 uh, year plan, but one of, of uh, I mean one of the important point in this regard is to, to, to recall uh, that the, the plan document of 12-5 year plan that says that uh, uh, we have certain uh, kind of, uh, we have to adjust ourselves and uh, in this adjustment process we have to in one way or the other uh, reconsider uh, I mean uh, university education or universities at not for profit institution. A, a kind of para, uh, paradigm shift is required and this is the main focus of the 12 5 year plan. Uh, so, shift from non profit uh, uh, universities to for profit institution and this is a paradigmatic shift and obviously in this case there will be greater say there, there will be greater a space for private players in the public uh, institutions and public space so far higher education is concerned but at the same time it is not that that the public will uh, just disappear and if we are thinking of the future of our uh, 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 country especially in the light of higher education especially in the light of uh, building our scientific and technical resource base in this regard public spending in higher education is one of the requisites a state cannot just uh, 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 wish uh, uh, i mean we cannot withdraw uh, from the responsibility which is there and we cannot say that uh, the private player will fulfill all the requisite I mean requirements of higher education. They have their own uh, and motives. Of course, integrating public and private is one of the innovative steps given our edu uh, uh, I mean economic compulsions and compulsions of the global process and to compete with the international uh, players uh, and especially in the light of internationalization of higher education. But at the same time, it is also important and more important and uh, to, to recall and to reiterate that we have to uh, say uh, also enhance our uh, public expenditure and budgetary allocation on higher education. It is not that a state would just confine itself only to the school education and only to the goal of achieving literacy. It is also important to step up our higher education, step up our technical education and we cannot, uh, I mean, uh, create a boundary between three sectors of education, primary education, secondary education and tertiary education. There is a greater need of integrating the three sectors together and therefore, we have seen that during the Sarv Sichabhyan we achieved certain objectives which it was intended to. Uh, but uh, once we achieved uh, uh, I mean this uh, objective, the demand also came for secondary education and uh, this was precisely uh, uh, the reason that during the 11th plan period we also uh, started a special program uh, that is uh, referred as Rashtriya Madhmik Siksha Abhiyan. So, obviously uh, in the case of uh, higher education we are also intending to uh, start another mission that is Rashtriya Uchitar, uh, Mad uh, Uchitar Siksha Abhiyan. So, obviously all these abhiyans have to be integrated uh, and uh, if we try to uh, I mean integrate all the three I mean budgetary allocations accordingly would be uh, I mean very very important and we cannot say that government will finance only the edu uh, uh, school education and higher education will be uh, uh, financed by the private players and private players will be the main uh, players in the education scene. We, we de do not deny uh, in fact the role of private uh, uh, initiative or private players have been very very important especially uh, in our uh, enroll, uh, enhancing uh, uh, school education. But 
three important emphasis during the 11th, uh, 12th five year plan that is expansion, uh, equity and excellence. All these three E have to be harmonized. We cannot achieve uh, I mean expansion or achieve excellence without our uh, after sacrificing the cause of equity. So, equity, expansion and excellence all these three have to be brought together only then we can achieve our goal and we can realize our national goal of higher education and technical education in the true sense of the term. And if we are uh, say I mean uh, on 20th uh, of this month we will have annual budget and uh, I am very much optimistic that government will pay due attention to higher education and it will allocate accordingly the resources required for a, a stepping up of higher education and technical education. Okay. So, well friends, Dr. Kumar Suresh not only ex, um, introduced to the different facet of the uh, higher education and the budgetary allocation, but also summed up very well what he taught today. So, I hope uh, this lecture must have been beneficial to you. So, with this word, we conclude the lecture. I thank all of you for watching the lecture and on behalf, I thank Dr. Kumar Suresh for giving such an insightful lecture. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you.